Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to have some fun in the garden because we are going to say goodbye to the tulips in the backyard. They gave us a glorious display, but all of the flower petals have fallen off. So we only have little tulip trees. So they are leaving us, but we are saying hello to some amazing, beautiful annuals that we are going to start planting in the backyard. Yes, it is early April. We're taking the plunge because we're going to go ahead and put annuals in there that can handle cooler temperatures. Um, and so we're up here at the production because this is where we're going to pull from. If you remember when we um, were planting all of the annuals, of course we had the potting machine right there, and we have this big huge area that is all of the annuals for the gardens both at the house and at the garden center, the signature garden. So basically starting from right here, you'll see the royal velvet um, petunias, those are not, that starts the retail. So everything to the left of that, so from here all the way down are the annuals for um, our use at the house and the nursery. What we are going to be doing today, and we're going to do some today and we're going to do some tomorrow because we just can't get it all in. Remember, we of course are um, hosting a wedding this uh, end of May, May the 25th. Uh, our sweet Alyssa is getting married. Alyssa has been an employee of ours for three or four years now. She is getting married. She asked if she could do the wedding at the house and the, and the nursery, and we said absolutely. Ceremonies at the signature garden, and then the reception is in the backyard. So we're focusing on the backyard today with these annuals. This is the beginning of preparing for, not beginning, we've already started to begin, but that next step in wedding preparations. What we're going to do is we are going to use the Supertunia Vista Snowdrift, which is a absolutely stunning pure white petunia that is very vigorous. So here you see Vista Snowdrift. It is that Vista series, of course, is the most vigorous series of petunias at the um, within the Proven Winners line. And so that is what we're going to be putting in the flower bed where the tulips were or are, but they're going to be were. Look at that beautiful tight plant. See how pretty that is? I mean, Jerry has grown these exceptionally well. This is the perfect stage to go ahead and put them in the ground. And I think Jerry is mic'd up. He just joined me. Um, and so as the grower, Mr. Simpson, yes, tell us why we can go ahead and put petunias in the ground when we're not to our last frost date yet. Well, these guys can take it to um, 20, 5, 28 degrees, you might need to protect from a little bit of frost if you worry about it. But we've had super bells outside at the nursery the last two frosts. We had one this morning. You had your Namesia outside, went through several frosts. So they're, they, they're tolerant of cold weather and it will not kill them. Now, if we were to get some sort of really crazy winter weather that started like at eight o'clock at night and it started going to freezing temperatures for the entire night all the way into the morning that's a different animal that could kill things but right what we're dealing with right now i feel like we're you know we're trending towards that maybe this morning was our last frost and we're going to go ahead and get them in because they won't for the next two weeks there's no 30 degree weather so these will have two weeks of outside getting accustomed to you know whatever you know the sun and they'll harden up their leaves harden them off and then they can take that frost yes yes so it's very exciting so the snow drifts are going to go into a big drift right there in the flower bed and then we also are going to put in we're going to mimic the other plants that we have been using within the containers like jerry was talking about uh, you see we have this massive row here of these. This is the Campfire Marshmallow. New color this year within the Bidens. Uh, Bidens is the type of plant, like a petunia or a um, apomea or whatever. So these are the Campfire Marshmallow. Very sweet, daisy-like flowers. 
that are going to go in big, huge sections of the flower beds, the two backyard beds, right? The island beds. So that will probably, I don't think we'll start that today because these are going to be pretty big projects. So we're going to use the uh, Campfire Marshmallow, uh, just really sweet wedding colors for early spring. Yeah, and we really do hope to show you to give you a good highlight on how to prepare um, an annual bed or two for super tunias. Super tunias are special. They are. They are special, that is for sure. We're give you some good tips on that. We are going to give you some great tips on how to prepare your soil so that it requires less work on you um, later on. And because we don't have time for diva plants, and sometimes petunias can be a little divish, shall we say. And so we're going to show you how to kind of eliminate that. Also, within that uh, planting, we're going to do the Aramance Mulberry Nemesia. This is actually one of Alyssa's absolute favorite plants, so we're going to put that in there along with the White Night Alyssum. Great, beautiful, fragrant. Both the Nemesia and the White Knight are very fragrant. So they are going to go in those two outer flower beds. Um, and so it is going to be super fun. So what we're going to do is we have got the fellas up here. I think they've already got the snow drifts loaded up. So we're going to head back down and show you exactly what we're going to do and get everybody ready so we can get these petunias in the ground and get them off to an amazing start. So they will be perfect for the wedding. And then of course the signature experience one month later at the end of June. So yeah, it's going to be a fun day out in the garden today. Here we are in the backyard where we are going to be planting the Supertunia Vista snowdrift. So before we even pull the plants out, there's a couple of things that you need to think about when you are preparing your bed for your annuals. Super tunias are uh, just naturally really heavy feeders, right? Sometimes we could say they could be a little divish in the garden because they do like lots of food. Why do they need so much food? Well, because of their gorgeous abundant flowers. Food equals flowers. If you have a plant that produces tons and tons of flowers, throughout the season, odds are it is going to be a heavy feeder. So we've got to give it food so that it can really grow, bloom, and thrive and give us all of those gorgeous flowers. Walk you through kind of what we are doing here and what the plan is. The plan is that the snow drift is, we're gonna start the planting um, just left of this doozy right here. We have a downspout where water pops up right here. And so it will, you can see that it probably washes right here. We're gonna to try to see if we can find some extra river rock and make a little decorative right here so that it doesn't wash out the flower bed. Plus I have got the summerific lilac crush right through here. So there's no point in me planting the snow drift right here because the, the summerifics are just gonna come all the way over. So we're basically going to start right here and then work our way down the entire bed. We're gonna do a staggered row, the, as far as two staggered rows and the minimum spacing for your vistas is 18 inches. So we will do that minimum spacing we're going to fill in the area below the doozies. So from the doozies down will be the snowdrift, one continuous mass planting of that. We have our hardwood mulch down, right? So this is what's in this flower bed. You can see that Jerry has just lightly raked some of it back from the grass. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and quote, remove this mulch by simply raking it and pulling it up to the doozies and then we'll feather it out into the rest of the flower bed. We want to do that so that we can see what our uh, natural soil looks like right here. Once we pull back all of the mulch, we are then going to assess the state of the soil. I suspect because I was in here planting the tulips that it is pretty nasty. It's probably pretty gnarly, thick red clay because this has not been a bed that we have been putting a ton of annuals in and it has not been heavily amended. So once we see the state of the soil, then we will determine how we're going to amend it. But the thing is when you're, we know that this is going to turn into an annual bed. So we're going to heavily amend it with lots of good organic matter. So we can use compost. If you have land and sea, you're going to use, you can use land and sea. 
we can use our Creekside blend, which is a great blend of compost and aged pine bark fines. Really heavily build that up because that provides nutrients for the petunias. We'll put the Proven Winners Time Release Fertilizer in here. We're going to use Biotone in here for those nice, strong, um, healthy roots that make a big difference. We want to amend this bed as much as we possibly can because of them being annuals and heavy feeders. Uh, so that is the plan for what we're going to do. Once we're, we've done that, we're gonna assess, we're gonna meet you back here and kind of uh, fill you in on what we've done and what we have decided to do. You know, I guess the one thing I wanna make sure everyone does understand though is it's like, I'm happy that there's clay there you know, because that cl the, the clay is going to hold water and it's going to hold the nutrients there. We just need to kind of give it some breaking up so it's easier for those annual roots just to take off. But, you know, snowdrifts are vista. Because we do get a lot of questions about people who maybe are not familiar with red clay. Maybe they've moved into the south and they're not familiar with red clay and they're like, should I go ahead and remove the t first, you know, couple of a foot of the red clay and, and then amend could. it? Well, you could, but that, I think that's just unnecessary. Yeah. I mean, I think that's just, you're just giving yourself. And there, and there are like, I was talking to this customer Saturday and there's just, uh, there are all these different, even here on our property, the different types of clays. <laughs> you know, at the, at the chicken coop, it's really hard. It's super hard pan, you know, not as hard here, but there is clay. Right, but my point is, you, and what Jerry's point is, is that you don't need to remove the clay soil. Clay soil is not bad. In and of itself, it is not bad. We just want to amend it with organic matter and organic material so that it will hold, because it holds those nutrients, it holds the food, and so once you get some food in there, it's not going to leach out as if you had, like, sandy soil. So the point oh, yeah. is not, we don't need to remove the, the red clay. It is not bad. We just need to add to it so that is what we're going yeah, to do thinking. especially for annuals now if we're going to yeah. plant you know something that's really hardy then that's a whole different ball game but because this is annuals heavy feeders that's why we're focusing so much on organic, organic material so it's food for the plant yeah all right exactly. so we're going to pull it back we're going to see what's going on and we'll uh we'll let you know have assessed and we have come up with a game plan went through and raked back all of that top the newest freshest mulch Jerry's kind of fine-tuning it right now that was the really big like chunky mulch right what you're seeing here on the uh, ground in the soil is the original mulch that has begun to decay. So it is smaller, it is mixed in, of course, with the native soil. So you have small chunks in there with the clay soil that's down in there. This is what we're going to leave. So what we have decided to do is to go ahead and this is as cleaned up as we want it to be as far as pulling back the thick, chunky mulch. We're gonna go ahead and we're just going to be completely honest. Um, we're not going to use our Creekside compost because that requires getting machines in here. And one, there's no need for it, right? Jerry said there's no need. Uh, there's no need for it, uh, but also requires the big machines to come in here to dump it. And the grass is looking really amazing. And we just had rain this past weekend. We do not want to tear up the grass. So uh, we're just going to grab a couple of bags of land and seed. This is not going to be like this massive thick layer of land and seed. So we're going to take land and seed, just throw some compost down. We're going to come back with biotone. We're going to sprinkle biotone straight on top of the land and seed. 
We're going to come back with the Proven Winners Time Release Fertilizer, sprinkle it straight on top, and then we're just going to go ahead and grab uh, the Power Planter Auger with the 5-inch Jenny's Edition Auger on there. And we're not even going to have the plants out yet because we know what our spacing is. All the plants are the exact same plants. So we're going to go through and drill all the holes, and then we'll come back and plop the plants in. Once the plants are in, then we're going to come back with, um, let me show you, this is from Daddy Pete. Daddy Pete is, they're a southern company? Yeah, North Carolina. North, they're a North Carolina company that makes um, soil amendments, compost. They have potting soil. They have this massive line. Um, we really love what they call their soil enhancer. And we have filled up the back of Jerry's machine with bags of that. So you will see it's called Pete's Soil Enhancer. Y'all, this stuff is great. All it is, is aged pine bark fines. So they literally take the bark off of pine trees. It is aged, composted for X amount of time, and then they bag it up. So there's no compost in here per se. It is just that aged pine bark fines, as you can see right here. You can use it in all kinds of soil preparations, and as they say, uh, also mulching. So we are going to use it as the mulch because like I said, this is gonna turn into an annual flower bed for us. So this is going to be our mulch. It will retain moisture. It will add amendments to the soil. It will uh, prevent weeds from coming up. All the things that you want in a good mulch, that is what we're gonna do. If you're in the South, if you're, especially if you're in North Carolina, you should readily be able to find Daddy Pete. Of course, we have it here at the nursery, um, but Daddy Pete is a very um, well-known, well-sourced uh, product here in North Carolina and the South. So if you, you should be able to find it. That's what I'm trying to say. So that is what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna set the camera up and we're just gonna get to work. We're gonna kind of lasagna effect all the amendments in the bed, drill the holes, plant them, and then get the mulch down. And then we'll take a look at the final product. friends we have got one or two of those vista snow drifts here in this area we actually had seven trays of the petunias allocated for this area this project and we used six and a half still really filled it in there as you can see we ended up doing um, a triple row instead of a double row please keep in mind we have a wedding back here the pressure is on me, self-imposed, not from the bride, self-imposed from me to make sure that this area is just absolutely magical and perfect for the wedding, as perfect as I could make it. So I want to have a mass of white here in front of the double play doozies. That's why we went ahead and just chocked it full. We just literally could not put any more of the snow drifts in here. So what I told Jerry is we're just going to save those snow drifts and then incorporate them in other areas of the garden back here. So that way it repeats that, uh, you get that same flower flowing through different parts of the garden. 
I have some ideas of where we put it. Um, we'll just kind of see how all of that shakes down. So uh, we got the land and sea down, we got the biotone down, and then we got the time release fertilizer in there as well. You may be like, Jenny, that's way too much fertilizer. What are you doing? Well, we have two different kinds of fertilizer going in here, right? So, well, actually three. So you got the compost, which is your organic matter, which is just natural food amends the soil. Your biotone specifically targets the root growth. So when you plant a plant, whether it's an annual, perennial, shrub, or tree, um, that is really going for a strong, healthy root system. There is irrigation in this flower bed. However, there will not be irrigation directly on these plants. Water will trickle down. It is still quite wet right here just from the rain that we have had, obviously the irrigation is not on. Um, so these are gonna get water, uh, but not tons of direct water. So I need their roots to be really well established. That is a trick that we have found here in the south, is the earlier you can plant your petunias, then the stronger their root system is and the better they will do long term um, throughout the summer. Because here, of course, we have to think about the heat and the humidity. How are they gonna handle that? When they have those really strong, massive root systems, they can handle it like champions. So that is what the biotone is for. The Proven Winners Time Release Fertilizer is just that. It is time released. It is actually released by the temperature. So in cooler uh, temperatures in the winter, that's why we don't use it because it's cold. It's not gonna be released. You're just kind of wasting your money. As we're entering into the warmer months, the temperature goes up, it releases the food. That kind of acts as an in-between so that I don't have to be out here as much doing water-soluble fertilizer. I will see how they do as far as like, when do I begin my water-soluble fertilizer uh, regimen? That will depend on the plants. As long as they're nice and thick and dark green and producing tons of flowers, I'm not gonna worry about it. Once they start to see maybe a little bit of a lighter green, the blooms are not as prolific, maybe say three weeks before the wedding, if they start doing that, then I'm gonna come in here at least once a week and sock them with that water-soluble fertilizer because that's an instant shot of food and will give them, green them up and give them beautiful flowers so that for the wedding, they will be uh, just in their prime condition. And then again, a month later when we have the signature experience, kind of that same thing, we'll, we'll judge it that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work as a team. Jerry is, uh, you know, I'm a smart woman. If I've got muscle here, I'm going to use it. So he is going to take the auger with, that is the Jenny's edition. It is a five inch auger. It has less flighting on it, so it's not quite as heavy, but yet it still has the heavy duty tip because this is clay soil and it is wet, so it is nice and goopy. He is going to, it's gonna, it's gonna cut through like hot butter. It is just going to make a beautiful hole, which is the perfect size for this grande. So he's gonna drill the hole. I'm gonna be moving plants back and forth and we're gonna work as a team. Then we'll probably, we'll come back and then actually plant them once all the holes have been dug. So that's the plan. All the petunias are in the ground, they are mulched, they have been lightly watered, and they are very happy. This project can be checked off the to-do list because 
it is done and I cannot wait to just watch it uh, grow and develop and get very happy in here. This bed is going to be just spectacular because of that gorgeous display of the Supertunia Vista Snowdrift all down through the front. The beautiful shrubs behind them, that is the Double Play Doozy Spirea. So they have just stunning foliage as you can see like right now. It is beautiful. These are deciduous shrubs and this is how they pop out in the late winter, early spring. The row behind that is some Pillatalk gardenias. Planted these late summer, so they're the, the low kind of supposed to be evergreen shrubs. Um, so these are the smaller, more petite gardenias from Proven Winners. Like I said, I planted them late in the summer. They really probably did not get a time to get fully established before the winter hit and man, they took a hit. There is one right here. She's dead. I mean, it is just crispy and the limbs break. So I don't know um, exactly what I'm going to do there. Um, I could just, you know, trim everybody back hard, fertilize them and see how they flush out. Be cutting it close as far as for the wedding because wedding's May 25th, gardenias like it hot. They probably, if they're going to bounce back, it would not be until really that they look great until like July and August. So that is an option. An option is, is to re simply replace the ones that look the worst with more pillow talks. We could do that or we could just pull them out, um, the ones that are still alive, put them in like a three gallon container trim them up, fertilize them, let them regrow. And then once they're nice and flushed out and developed, I could add them to a different part of the garden somewhere else. And then I could come back through here um, with some, like some annuals, right? So I could do um, a salvia would be beautiful and angelona would be beautiful, just something like that. Or I could even do a coleus. There's lots of options that I could do. That's the great thing about annuals is because they're such fast growers, you know, fast performers that they look great in that season. And so that could be something that I do there. Um, that is definitely an option. And then of course, behind that in the very, very back is the row of incredible hydrangeas. Right now they're very stickish. They are putting out some new growth, but the Incredibles are that smooth hydrangea and they bloom on new growth. They have these massive, um, pure white flowers on them. Classic hydrangea, what you, what you think is a hydrangea, but they are color specific. So they're going to be white no matter what. So that is going to be a beautiful display um, within there. And then, you know, as we go through the rest of the gardens as well, it'll all tie in. So if you're looking at putting petunias in the ground, petunias do amazingly well in the ground. Uh, super bells, one thing to caution about super bells, because that's why you will never see me put super bells in the landscape with our thick clay soil. Super bells hate to have wet feet. And if you have, comp like not, not even compact, but if you have clay soil that retains moisture really well, odds are they're not gonna thrive there. That's why we use them in hanging baskets and containers, uh, hay racks, those kinds of things. It drains really well. So that's why I don't plant super bells in the ground. They just do not perform for me well. It is a slow death. Petunias though, you got it. Any kind of petunia does really well in the ground. All right, my friends, as always, we hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have an amazing day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.